Today, Jesus invites his apostles to come and rest. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. If you remember well, last Sunday, Jesus had sent them two by two on mission. He had asked them to take with them only the bare essentials, that is, just the staff and sandals. And they set out. They walked a lot. They talked to people. They also listened to what the people had to say. And then they healed the sick and drove away evil spirits. They must have also spent the night with the people, for had not Jesus told them, where you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. Now that they are tired, it is time to get back to Jesus. They are victims of their own success. They attract so many people that they do not even have time to eat, says St. Mark. Being sensitive to their fatigue, Jesus invites his apostles to go away with him to a lonely place and recuperate their forces. The book of Ecclesiastes says that there is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to break down and a time to build up. There is a time to go on mission and a time to get back to the source. Source with a capital S, that is Jesus. Stress can make a misery of your work. How can you speak to the people of God if you do not take the time to replenish yourselves? This is what Jesus is saying. Along with the Apostles, are we not today invited to rest with Christ and find a remedy to our tired souls? A baby rests snugly in its mother's arms, not because of the strong grip of the mother, but because of her presence, because of the words that are said and because of the atmosphere that is created. Just so, as adults, we feel rested and very much refreshed when we are well adjusted in life and when we are comfortable with our relationships. The right distance with regard to different persons and the equilibrium between our work and home will give us the serenity and the ease that we are so much in need of. But we often find ourselves in an uptight position, blocked in, under pressure, and unbalanced, and often we are always tired especially in this rat race of Gauteng. The solution is to change our position, that is, to reposition, reposition ourselves with Christ so that he makes us nestle comfortably in life and provides us with landmarks to guide us through. In the past, Priests used to speak of the daily examination of conscience, 
to be able to reposition ourselves with Christ. Afterwards, the term fell out of favour because the expression seemed to denote a sort of court of criminal appeal and was thought to be incongruous with the spirit of the Second Vatican Council. Now that the tendency is a return to the sources, we could perhaps go back to salient features of this practice. Here is one of the methods. As we get up in the morning, we will pass in our mind all that we have to do during the coming day. Grateful to the Lord for new life, and asking for his help to bring it to fruit. At night, we will pass the day once again, but this time like a flashback, or like replaying a video, thanking the Lord for all the good done, and asking for his forgiveness for the wrongs committed. That way, we can reposition ourselves with Christ and find rest in his presence. The people of Israel who are very much conscious that true rest can be found only in God. Today's first reading spoke of the earthly kings who disappoint the people. Wretched shepherds who allow the flock of my sheepfold to be destroyed and scattered. You have not taken care of them, says Jeremiah. And after that reading, we had Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. And we concluded, You have prepared a banquet for me, and my cup is overflowing. This has been the experience of all the disciples of Christ. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Saint Augustine, the great African saint, he said, You have made us for yourself, Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find its rest in you. And so Jesus and the apostles get on a boat and sail away. But the joy of picnicking and of resting with the Lord will last just a couple of hours till they get to the other side, to the other shore. The people have guessed where they are headed to. They run ahead of them. When Jesus and his disciples land on the other side of the lake, they are already there, waiting for them. Jesus takes pity on these sheep without a shepherd. To speak of this pity of Jesus, Mark uses the Greek word splachna, which means the bosom. This is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word rachamim, which denotes the mother's bosom or even her womb and which is the Old Testament's term to denote God's kindness towards Israel, towards his people. Missionaries are required to reflect the compassion of God for his people. Through Jesus, God's mercy for his creatures manifests itself, and at times this could keep the people for days together with him. The urgency of the mission takes over the day's rest. The disciples discover that no sooner had they got in, they have to go out once again. 
that their community is meant for dispersal, that the inside of their church is in fact outside, that with Christ they should learn to become nomads, as St. Francis would put it, pilgrims and strangers in this world, and always be on the ready to leave in order to conquer the joy.